Hi friends, Melissa Kerman here with Melissa's Crafting Treehouse. Today's video features a fun variation of the spotlighting technique. In a recent Facebook Live video, I shared the following two projects, and they are the, a traditional approach to spotlighting where you use a stamp that is an outline image and requires coloring in. I wanted to use the um, Flowering Desert stamp set, which is of course not a coloring in set. So it presented some different challenges, and so that's the subject of this video. So I started with the Crackle Paint stamp set to create my background, and I'm using the gray granite uh, ink, and I'm going to stamp off on my scratch paper, and then uh, use that second ink on my focal piece. Now I'm going to use my Stamparatus to stamp uh, the images for this, and it is important that you set up your images on the Stamparatus because we'll be doing a two-step process to get the spotlighting to work. So I'm starting with my basic gray on what I'm calling sort of the flower image or the berries and stamping that on my focal piece. Next I'm going to ink up um, the smallest of the images in the Smoky Slate ink, and I have a second um, Stamparatus plate set up, and now I'm turning that plate around because I have other images on the other side, and now I'm using my Memento um, black on both the sort of little plant that's on the left and as well as the sentiment. You can see now both of those are stamped, and then last but not least I'm using the Smoky Slate again on the cactus, um, and that was on the back side of the first plate, so I turned it around there. So now I'm, I'm done with the main focal piece, and um, I could stop there, but of course I'm not going to because I'm going to show you how to do the spotlighting. So first I have to clean my plates and turn them around so I can start again, and I'm just using a baby wipe to do that. And I'm using Versamark. I'm going to ink up my, uh, my berries or my flowers first, and then right after I ink up with Versamark, I'm going to um, ink right over the top with my basic gray ink. And uh, yes, I'm doing one on top of the other. And after I stamp it, I'm going to immediately take it and put it in my clear embossing powder uh, to cover it, and then I'll go ahead and heat it. Now, um, the Versamark is what allows the ink to stay wet just a little bit longer. Um, which means that you can essentially use this method to um, get a heat embossed image in any color that you want. If I hadn't used the Versamark and just used the ink, it would most likely have dried too quickly to be able to put it in the embossing powder and have the embossing powder stick to it. So now I'm going to repeat this process now using the Versamark and then the Smoky Slate on that second image there, stamp it, and then heat emboss it. And uh, so that it doesn't dry, I'm doing it quickly So and doing the heat embossing between each step. So next I'm turning my plate around and I'm going to ink up uh, that little uh, plant, if you will, on the left. Again, using the Versamark and then the Memento in this case. And then covering it in powder, heating it again. And then uh, last but not least, I will use the, um, the Versamark with the cactus and then the smoky slate again, ink that up, and put it in the powder, and heat emboss that as well. So after it's heat embossed, I essentially have two of the exact same focal piece or image, set of images, one that's heat embossed and one that's not in exactly the same colors. So next I'm going to use a one and a quarter inch circle punch, and there you can see them side by side and I'm going to punch out a certain section of the foliage, the plant matter, um, on the lower portion of the focal piece. And I'm trying to get a little bit of all of the images. Now off camera I'm going to uh, punch out uh, or die cut a circle from the uh, layering circles framelits and attach those pieces together. Now, uh, I found that the layering circles framelits um, are often just exactly one eighth of an inch larger than several of our circle punches. So you can get a nice thin layer around the circle, which makes it perfect for the spotlighting technique. 
So now I'm just getting my position there and superimposing it directly over uh, where it would uh, naturally be so that you can uh, see the one section that's uh, shiny and uh, around it the areas that are not. So just a few more steps and we're done with this card. So I have actually done two versions of this card and on this one that I'm showing you here I have dry embossed the card body, the front of the card body, um, with the subtle embossing folder so it just gives it kind of a little bit of a texture to it. And uh, so I did that off camera. And now I'm just going to attach my focal piece to my um, gray granite backing and attach some dimensionals to the back side. And when I put my focal piece onto the card base, I'm going to justify it uh, slightly to the right to uh, leave room for the, um, the braided linen trim on the right hand side. And I'm just tying a knot uh, at the top and trimming it off. And I want that knot to be just a little bit higher, so I'm going to bow my card just a tiny bit so I can slide the ribbon up. And last but not least, I'm just going to add an inside piece to the card, and then I'm all done. So I may have mentioned that I did two different versions of this card. Um, the one I shared with you today had the dry embossed uh, card body, and I also stamped the crackle image first, as you may remember, in stamped off ink for um, the second version, which I'm showing you here, uh, I stamped the crackle paint uh, stamp uh, last, and uh, so it showed up quite a bit stronger and over the other images. And here is the card I showed you today, and a close-up so you can really see the spotlighting well. I hope you've enjoyed today's project, and if you did, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and give it a thumbs up and share it with friends. Thanks so much for spending some time with me today. Till next time, happy crafting.